Good morning. Welcome to the first Unitarian Fellowship of Nanaimo. Our mission is to create spiritual connection and bring compassion, discovery, and social justice to life. My name is Rupert Raj, and my pronouns are he, him, and his. Please take a moment now to silence your cell phones. Thank you. Let's say hello to everyone attending on Zoom. Turn to the frog at the back of the hall and wave. We are in gallery mode, so those in the hall and those on Zoom can wave to each other. Whatever your ethnicity, race, theological belief, sexual orientation, gender identity, or expression, age, and everything else that makes you who you are, please know that you are warmly welcome in our community. We are grateful for a diversity of voices on Sunday mornings, and our services vary from week to week. Services run from 60 to 75 minutes. If this is your first time with us, a very special welcome to you. If you are joining us online, please consider sharing your contact information with us. You can share it with the host by going to the chat icon at the bottom of your screen. We'd love to welcome you to our community. We have a wonderful website, ufon.ca, and invite you to check it out for more detailed information about who we are, the services we offer, and how you can connect with us. We acknowledge today that we meet on the traditional territory of the Snunamak First Nation. As Unitarians, we are committed to the work of reconciliation required to address the harm done to all Indigenous peoples and their cultures by non-Indigenous peoples. We have much to learn from the Indigenous perspective that the earth is the source of all life and that our responsibility is to honor and care for it. We have three announcements. A reminder from the Welcoming Congregation Renewal Task Force to please put your name on our pride sign-up sheet on the bulletin board at the back of the hall where Ruth is pointing, if you can help out on Sunday, June 9th. And we are now looking for someone to help us pitch our tent at the June 9th Pride Festival in Matthew Sutton Park. So if you can help, please sign, on the sh sign your name on the sheet or contact Rupert and Catherine at welcoming at ufon.ca. And an announcement from Ruth. Just six more days until the goods and services auction, Saturday, June 1st. Doors open at 5 p.m. and we hope everyone will come. Whether you plan to bid at the auction or not, it is a fun-filled evening of feasting and festivities that should not be missed. Read up on auction items donated so far and get a sneak peek at many of the goods on offer. Turn around to see Ruth pointing at the list and goods. The list, the list and the goods. <laughs> it's not too late to donate to the auction. In particular, we are looking for events to be donated so that we can build community through the, through the year. Donor forms are available. There's also a potluck sign-up sheet at the back. Please let us know what you plan to bring so we get a balance of main dishes, sides, salads, and desserts. And an announcement from Ellie. Today's scheduled fun fest at Bowen Park has been canceled due to rainy weather. Our theme for today's service is Equity Beyond Equality, presented by Reverend Deborah Folk. Reverend Deborah Folk is a lifelong Unitarian Universalist who retired in 2021 as a minister emerita after 11 years with Calgary Unitarians. Her many roles have included being a chaplain at Vancouver General Hospital, director of religious education in Victoria, and parish ministry to congregations in Alberta and Ontario. She is now one of the two BC reps to the CUC Canadian Unitarian Council Board. She also served on the collegial development team of the UU Ministers Association. Currently, she is excited with the adventure of co-ownership of her new home in Victoria, building community and being close to family. Let us now enter into sacred time. Our music director will lead us into worship through music. Rules 
Thank you, Leah. It's such a delight. Our opening words this morning come from my colleague, the Reverend Sunshine Jeremiah Wolf. This is a congregation that gathers in faith. Not faith in one religion or one God or any one way. We gather in faith of the power of diversity, the power of love, and the hope of a world transformed by our care. We gather in faith in ourselves and those around us, not a faith that requires perfection or rightness in one another, rather a faith that in our shared imperfection, we may learn to stumble and fall together. Faith that we will help one another to rise and to try again and again. We are Unitarian Universalists. We will now light the chalice. We light this chalice to celebrate the inherent worth and dignity of every person, to reaffirm the historic pledge of liberal religion, to seek that justice which transcends mere legality and moves toward the resolution of true equality, and to share that love which is ultimately beyond even our cherished reason, that love which unites us. In the warmth of this light, may we strive to dismantle barriers, bridge divides, and listen to every and listen to every voice. Let us nurture a world where equity flourishes, where all are seen, valued, and empowered to thrive. Now Leah will lead us into our first song. Good morning, everyone. Our first song this morning is Guide My Feet, number 348. I invite you to rise in body or in spirit, and we'll sing together.
Good morning. My name is my name is Wendy Ellen. My pronouns are she and her. Uh, I am the director of spiritual exploration for the Children and Youth Program, and. I am fundraising with Kiana today, and we had cancellations, and so we have to run out of here. We have to race out of here um, right after I read the story. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, and some of the youth group will be there as well. And uh, we are doing a bottle drive on Hayes Road, so anyone wants to drop off bottles, you're more than welcome. We also have a prize going on draw. Um, this story for today is called The Golden Acorn, and it's written by Jocelyn... Argueta and illustrated by Pili Huang. And this story was commissioned, uh, was put out in the US, uh, a commission to have people and authors to write stories, more stories about equity and getting involved in the importance of that for children. And this was one of the stories that resulted out of that um, request. And in the next newsletter, I will put a link and it'll show all the stories to that and more information. The Golden Acorn Tree. On a crisp autumn morning, a little squirrel woke up with a nice big stretch. Oh, what a beautiful day to start collecting acorns for the winter, she said. The little acorn took her favorite path in the forest. She scurried through the trees, turning left and right until she reached the golden acorn tree with leaves as bright as the sun and a trunk as tall as a mountain. The golden acorn tree had acorns sprinkled on every branch and the little squirrel gathered as many as she could carry. On her way home, she shared the acorns with her neighbors, one for the friendly bunny to add to her cupboard, one for the curious owl to inspect with wonder one for the quiet skunk who was peeking out of his window. Why do you always give the skunk an acorn when he rarely comes outside? asked the owl. The little squirrel replied, the forest is home to all of us, so we should take care of each other. She hurried home to roast an acorn for dinner. The next day, the little, the little squirrel picked more acorns to deliver to her friends, one for the mama bear to share with her cub, one for the active raccoon to kick around all day, and one for the quiet skunk who was peeking out of his window. Why do you always give the skunk an acorn when he rarely talks to us? asked the raccoon. The little squirrel replied, the forest is home to all of us and we should all take care of each other. Then she went back to her tree house and added more acorns to her growing collection. One morning as the little squirrel approached her favorite golden tree, she heard a powerful crash and felt the ground shake. She ran as fast as she could to see what was happening. She watched the golden acorn tree disappear into the distance. Why are you taking my special tree? and all of our acorns, the little squirrel cried. She walked back to her house with her head hung low. All the neighbors were worried about the sad little squirrel. When she passed the skunk's home, she was surprised by a soft whisper. Hi, little squirrel, why are you so sad? The little squirrel sighed. Someone took the golden acorn tree, and now I don't have any acorns to save for the winter or to share with everyone. The skunk said, follow me. I want to show you something. He led the little, little squirrel down a secret path. They squeezed through the bushes. They scurried through the trees, turning left and right until they reached a garden full of golden trees. Some were short, but others were tall with acorns hanging from every branch. The little squirrel couldn't believe her eyes. Why did all these trees, where did all these trees come from? The skunk smiled. Every year I planted some of the acorns that you so kindly shared with me. The skunk picked up an acorn and gave it to the little squirrel. The forest is home to all of us, so we should take care of each other. 
They gathered as many acorns as they could carry to share with all of their neighbors. The community thanked the skunk for his generosity. As the seasons went on and the new acorn trees grew, so did all of their friendships. Thank you. I'll now recite the reading. When equity is the path. In the pursuit of justice, equity is not just a principle. It is the path to a fair and inclusive society. Equity recognizes that different individuals and communities start from varied positions, and it seeks to level the playing field, providing everyone with the opportunities and resources they need to thrive. Imagine a world where every child regardless of their background, has access to quality education, where every person, regardless of their race, gender, or socioeconomic status, has equal access to opportunities for advancement. This is the vision of equity in action. Achieving equity requires acknowledging and dismantling the systemic barriers that perpetuate inequality. It requires us to confront our biases and prejudices, and actively work towards creating a more just and equitable society. But the journey towards equity is not easy. It requires courage, determination, and persistence. It requires us to challenge the status quo and push back against injustice wherever we find it. It requires us to stand up for those who have been marginalized and oppressed and to advocate for policies and practices that promote fairness and equality. Yet, as daunting as the task may seem, we must remember that every step we take forwards towards equity brings us closer to a world where justice reigns supreme. Every act of kindness, every voice raised in solidarity, every policy change that is, it is Every policy change that promotes equality is a step forward on the path to justice. So let us commit ourselves to the pursuit of equity, knowing that it is not only the right thing to do, but also the necessary thing to do if we truly want to build a world where everyone has the opportunity to thrive. Together, let us work towards a future where justice is not justice is not just a dream, but a reality for all. So good to be in community where our joys can be magnified through the witness, our sorrows eased, and the milestones in our lives celebrated. So good to be in community where we can center ourselves be grounded and have time of silence and meditation together as well. One of my profs at theologi theological school said that a spiritual community is mature when they can be in silence together. So I invite us into a silence, first with words, then a silence, and then Leah will bring us out of the silence with music. These words are from Alex Capitan, who, by the way, will be the theme speaker at next year's August Elliott Family Camp. A meditation on opposites. Spirit of the universe, life force that flows through all beings, 
power beyond our knowing. We ask you to help us see beyond our dependence on opposites, to transcend our desire to know who is like us and who is not. Open us to the knowledge that in this room there are complexities and diversities of identities beyond black and white, old and young, woman and man, poor and rich, uneducated and educated, disabled and able-bodied, gay and straight, ill and healthy, wrong and right, broken and whole. In this room, there are people who embody juxtaposition, who can tell stories written on their bodies about both and neither, who carry intimate pieces of the truth that there is no such thing as opposites. Spirit of many names and of no name at all, help us find release from our belief that all things must be either or. This belief that walls us off from one another, ensnaring in us in a battle of same versus different. Help us to open our minds, to listen deeply, and to truly know one another. Finally, glimpsing the kaleidoscopic beauty of the divine. My undergrad studies were in the disciplines of anthropology and psychology. One of the required anthropological courses was archaeology. One of the labs we had in one of the courses involved looking at bone shards and fragments large enough to have some identifying features. We all got to hold the bone shards, to turn them around and look at all the angles to determine all the information possible they might provide. The bone quiz required a determination of gender, age, and what stage in homo sapien development they came from, you know, like Neanderthal or Homo erectus, I know there's others, I don't remember them. <laughs> the bone quiz was legendary. One of those challenges every anthropology student had to endure. It was a hoop that we had to go through. There was much wailing and gnashing of teeth. Though never from one particular student, an amazing young woman who was legally blind. She was required to provide all the same information. However, she did so 
only from touching the bones. Since each study group of six people had one set of bones, someone, I like to think maybe it was me, suggested that we take photos of the bones for us sighted people and let her have the primary access to the physical bones. This was back in the last century. And so we didn't have digital cameras attached to our portable phones. And it made the endeavor not quite as simple as it would be today. There was also, to my recollection, one member of our study group who didn't think it was particularly fair for her to have free access to the bones. I do remember that she totally aced the bone quiz. And perhaps to embellish this morning's story, the whiner was unsuccessful even on his second try. <laughs> this experience comes to mind for me often when I'm feeling hard done by, or when I think things aren't quite fair. It humbles me and alters my perspective. It's interesting to me that it came so fully to mind when engaging with the concept of equity. If I had thought about it in this context, it would have been accommodation more than equity. Soap Agabalusi, the British justice, equity, diversity, inclusion, and belonging coach says, and I quote him, Equality does not see color, therefore contributes to privilege. Equity sees color, recognizes systemic forms of racism, and actively provides resources to level the playing field. I have edited the version somewhat and offer it again. Equality does not see color or ability therefore contributes to privilege. Equity sees color and different abilities, recognizes systemic forms of oppression, and actively resources, provides resources to level the playing field. We have a, new, a relatively new eighth principle here in Canada that we affirm and promote individual and communal action that accountably dismantles racism and systemic barriers to full inclusion in ourselves and our institutions. I think that is what he was saying as well. Perhaps you are familiar with the image of three people trying to watch a ball game. I think when Reverend Meg was here, she actually showed that picture. One person, and I'm sorry, I'm going to use feet and not centimeters. One person is five foot tall. One person is four feet tall. And one person is three foot tall. They are outside of a four foot fence. The five foot tall person is the only one who can see. They are each given a foot block, a square foot block to stand on. The tallest person who didn't really need it can see perhaps even better. The four foot tall person can now see. However, the three foot tall person still cannot see over the fence. They are treated equally. And yet, not all have access to being able to see the game. A redistribution of the one foot blocks so that the shortest person has two means all of them can see. They are treated equably. Now, I have seen this meme with just those two panels, the equitable, the equal and the equitable. And I've also seen it with two more panels. One of them has the fence totally remodeled so that it's see-through, so everyone can see without any extra or particular supports or accommodation. The cause of the inequity is addressed, the systemic barrier removed. 
Once in a while, there is also a fourth panel. In this one, the tallest person has all the supports and a few extra to boot. They stand precariously atop a stack of blocks with balance their focus rather than enjoying the game. And of course, the other two cannot see a thing. The fourth panel came to mind when I read in our Touchstones theme package the following. In 1998, in his essay on our second principle, that principle states that we affirm justice, equity, and compassion in human relations, the Reverend Dick Gilbert wrote, equity not only demands that a society improve the conditions of its impoverished, but also calls into question the corruptions of the affluent. If we believe that religious values should determine how the marketplace operates rather than the other way around, equity becomes a measuring rod for social justice. He also noted that in imagining a new society as a thought experiment, there is a creative tension between absolute equality and equity as fairness. While we still cannot speak of equality in any meaningful way because of the continuing concentration of power, privilege, and wealth, especially of the 1% or even the one-tenth of 1%, the expansion of rights over time has been significant. A precious gift, born of struggle, of century-long pursuit of equity. As Shafin Varani writes, we must first ensure equity before we can enjoy equality. Equity involves fairness and impartiality in the distribution of resources, opportunities, and privileges. Unlike equality, equity recognizes that people have different needs and starting points and seeks to address those differences. Equity involves giving everyone what they need to be successful, even if it means providing various levels of support or resources to different individual groups. Achieving equity often requires proactive measures to mitigate systemic barriers for marginalized or disadvantaged groups, aiming for equal outcomes rather than equal treatment, equal outcomes rather than equal treatment. This is such a significant part of the work we have to do to truly strive and live into our eighth principle requires a real willingness to look at the systemic issues and witnessing how pervasive inequity is. It is really the water we swim in Equity is the recognition of the fact that different people have different needs and treating them equally is not always fair. That's, I would add that that's beings, not just humans, that have different needs to be considered. And that responding to this call is that all beings might thrive. And this I think for me anyway may need mean a shift, even a sacrifice for me and for some of us. Benjamin Franklin, now there's going back a ways. He said that justice will not be served until those who are unaffected are as outraged as those who are. That's worth repeating, I think. Justice will not be served until those who are unaffected are as outraged as those who are. In so many ways, I have been unaffected. And yet, there have been times when I have been marginalized. Being a woman of my age, that has happened, as all women will agree. 
being a single parent living below the poverty line was another experience in my lifetime. And yet, even with those opportunities where I was marginalized, I am still unaffected largely by this issue of equity. I spent time with board members this uh, last week and an aspirant. So one of the board members on the national organization is also an aspirant for ministry. And she is, and they are otherly abled. And they raise all kinds of issues that need to be addressed that I never would have considered, including on a form where you have to check off what you cannot do. What does that do to her, to them, to constantly having to be saying, this is what I cannot do? It's a little thing, and yet there are, this is the water we swim in. Hmm. We can make changes in our own lives to put ec the equity lens on. I know it's a muscle I'm starting to build to look at our choices always with whether fairness is included in the decision. It's not always fair. I think that might be one of the first words that kids learn, right? It's not fair. <laughs> and that is really the word that has come to monopolize my, to dominate my understanding of equity fairness. Those two words I see as more interchangeable than equality and equity. And while the literature hasn't particularly identified kindness along with fairness, it seems like a natural pairing to me. We have to be willing to embrace the full autonomy of people who are less privileged and understand that equity means making access to opportunity easier and not deciding which opportunities they deserve. This is another thing that continually happens in our work of justice building, to ask the people with lived experience what is needed rather than trying to decide what they need. This is a muscle to build. I am in the process of doing that. I invite you to engage in it with me as we go forward. And I'd like to close my reflection with um, a final quote from Cynthia Omledo. She said, diversity is being invited to the dance. Inclusion is being asked to dance. Equity is allowing you to choose the music. May it be so, and may we sing this into being with song number 121, We'll Build a Land. Leah will lead us there. I invite you to rise in body or in spirit.
Now that people are attending services, both in the hall and online, we have updated how we accept donations and pledges to support the fellowship. If you're in the hall, Cheryl and Sharla will now pass the baskets for the, sorry, Sharon and Sharla will now pass the baskets for the collection. If this is your first time with us, your presence is your contribution. The, those online can go to our website and click the big blue donate button at the bottom of the homepage and follow the instructions to donate via e-transfer or check. To help the wider community, 50% of all anonymous donations received are donated to the designated charity of the month. Our charity for the month is Connective, a community-based social services nonprofit operating in BC and the Yukon. Note, if you are donating online or by check, these are not anonymous. So if you wish to contribute to the charity of the month, you need to note that on your e-transfer or check. We are grateful for your offering. Our closing words, equity is not merely a concept. It's a principle that should be woven into the fabric of our societies, institutions, and interactions. May we commit ourselves to the pursuit of equity, not just as a lofty ideal, but as a moral imperative for a truly diverse, just, an inclusive society. In a world plagued by disparities, equity serves as our moral compass, guiding us toward a more inclusive society. Let us commit to dismantling barriers and fostering environments where every individual can thrive, irrespective of their background or circumstance. For the pursuit of equity in the pursuit of equity lies the essence of true humanity. We'll now extinguish the chalice. So everyone, pre please read aloud with me the words on the screen. We, we extinguish, extinguish this flame but not the light of truth, the warmth of community, or the fire of commitment. These we carry in our hearts until we are together again. We are nearing the end of our service. After we sing Carry the Flame, you have the opportunity to join a social group. There are breakout rooms available online and in the hall for the next 30 minutes. If you want to join an online breakout room, stay online and the host will put you there. For those wanting to join the discussion, please stay where you are. Thank you for your participation today. We will now sing our final song, Carry the Flame. The words are on the wall in the hall. Our custom is to stand and hold hands or touch elbows as you feel comfortable. <laughs> 